one thing I realize, one of many things, is that a lot of men are not having the success they would like when it comes to dealing with women, right? And unfortunately, the reality is that that can cause a lot of men to become discouraged, lose hope, get bitter in some cases, you name it. And though I understand things are different in today's world compared to a while back, I, I'm still a firm believer that there's a lot a man can do to experience better results. And that if you get too caught up in the, the missed attempts or the, the, the failed missions, right, you take your eye off the prize of how can you improve yourself to get the results that you're looking for. So when you're feeling like women just don't like you, it's like, no, don't just stop there. Let's go deeper. Or even thinking, well, women just want too much. They're too difficult. They require all these things. Because let me mention real quick, you'll, you'll hear these videos or see these videos online, women saying they want six figures, six foot, six pack, whatever. Listen, the majority of women are with men who don't fit that description, plain and simple. The majority of women are with men who don't make six figures. The majority of women are with men who do not have a six pack, all right, or who are not six feet tall. So there are tons of men who have found success outside of that description. And if you are still not finding success, it's because there are things that you're overlooking that you need to be willing to tap into. And rather than be offended by that idea, look at it as an opportunity to grow and experience better in your life. So let's get to this list of reasons why you're struggling with women. And one of those reasons is because you're not presenting yourself effectively online or offline. So let's start with online real quick. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but there's a lot of studies about how what, what the experience is in online dating apps and things of that nature. And it's led people to just tell men it's pointless, don't waste your time. But here's what I've seen. All right, I've, I've witnessed this in clients and in other individuals I know. I know of men. I know of many situations where a man who in person may not be, again, this guy who can just get women easy, goes online and he's racking up opportunities left and right. And the reason why, he's not catfishing, right? He's not lying in his profile, but he is putting effort in how he presents himself online. Guys that I know who are seeing success, they might put more effort in getting nice pictures taken, being very strategic about the pictures that they present in their profile. They're putting a little bit more effort into that. And with that more effort, they're getting more opportunities. All right. And once they get their foot in the door, it can lead to potential relationships and desired outcomes with women. They're having much more success. But a lot of dudes go online, put no real effort into their images, no real effort into their presentation, and they wonder why they're not getting better results. But then in person, it happens as well. Because even me as a man, I can tell you there's been times where I've been out, I look around, I'll be in a, at an event, I'm looking around, I'm observing the people, I'm observing the men, I'm observing the women, and I'm looking at some of these men like, yo, is that really how you came outside? Is that really how you're showing up here? And then you're surprised when women are not showing you any love? Like, you got to be willing to put some effort into your presentation. Now, there's tons of videos online, and I'll do some in the future about what some of those things are, but just simple things like clothes that fit you the right way, finding a style that works for you. I'm a firm believer in if you have a female friend, getting her opinion on what looks good on you, all right? Because you want to see it through the eyes of a woman because that's who you're trying to attract. But one way or another, just little things like that can go a long way. A haircut, a haircut. Again, I've said it plenty of times. We've seen videos online where a man walks into the uh, barbershop looking one way, comes out looking like a whole brand new man. And that makes a huge difference. So if you're trying to experience better success, you got to start looking at how you're presenting yourself online and offline. All right, so next on this list of reasons why you struggle with women or why women don't like you 
is because bottom line is you're trying too hard. Now, do not confuse trying too hard with putting forth actual effort, all right? Here's the difference. When I say trying too hard, that usually correlates or goes with trying to be something you're not, being overly persistent, all right? Not taking the hint to the point where now you become annoying. Um, again, trying to in overly impress a woman when she just doesn't have any interest in you. Those things can be turnoffs. Those things can make you look lame to a lot of women, all right? Instead, when I say putting in effort, it means, yes, yeah, show up as your best self. Be mindful of how your, what your presentation is. Learning how to have a conversation. Growing yourself in other areas of your life so that you become a more desirable partner. That's the effort that you need. But you have to get to a point where when it comes to trying to talk to women, you present your interests, right? But you don't need to be trying to chase after anybody. You don't need to be overly, you know, trying so hard to get her attention. I'm not saying there aren't men who haven't eventually won the woman over. But in a lot of those scenarios, they win her over in the sense that she finally gives them a chance, but she's still not really into them. She didn't magically become all into them now. I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm just saying in most of those cases, it doesn't go well. You don't have to do all that if you're already presenting yourself as a desirable man or you know who you are. Because here's the reality. You might try to talk to a woman. You can't show her you, all the great things about you in this quick moment, right? So not everyone's going to grasp or understand the quality of man you are. But you don't need to go overboard trying to show it. All you need to be doing is showing up as your best self, presenting your interests, and then letting the chips fall where they may. If she's interested, great, we move forward. If she's not, we move on to the next. That's it. We don't internalize the rejections. We don't view the losses in a negative way. We just understand this is part of the cycle. This is what comes with it. And you continue to move forward. You continue to be confident. But trying too hard and especially being trying to be something that you're not is a horrible way to go. All right, so we got some more to go. And the next thing on the list of reasons why women don't like you is because you don't know how to hold a conversation, all right? So listen, this is one of the biggest complaints I get from women. And I know I already hear some of y'all dudes saying, well, these women don't know how to hold a conversation either. <laughs> and, and I get it. I get it. But again, we can only focus on what we can control. We can't worry about the ones that don't know how to have a conversation themselves. The question is, do you? Do you know how to cultivate a conversation? And I think there are a lot of men who struggle with this, okay? Who are not comfortable with communication or who are not confident in their communication as well. I think one of the best things a man can do to help him be able to hold more in-depth conversations and go further than just what are you doing today and sexual talk and things of that nature is take time to learn something. Like, the more you become educated about a certain topic, it gives you more to talk about with somebody. Like, I'm very passionate about health and fitness, and I'm constantly researching things. So though I naturally am a good communicator, I know how to hold conversations in various different areas, learning more about health just gave me another thing that I can talk about that now allows me to, in many cases, teach the woman about some things or introduce her to something that she wasn't aware of. And women like that. They like when a man can teach them something. They like when they can learn from you, all right? They, they like when you know some things that they didn't, that you're introducing them to a different world. That is intriguing to them, and that's going to make you a more desirable partner. So whatever it is, educate yourself on some things. Read some books or watch videos on educational material. And when I say educational material, again, whether that be politics, whether that be houses, cars, health, whatever, learn and become good at it and expand your knowledge, which will help you expand your conversation. All right, so we got a few more. Another reason why women don't like you is because you come across as arrogant and you're always talking about yourself. So 
When it comes to dating and relationships, it's about getting to know each other, all right? And though we want you to present your best self, you know, it's the saying that goes, confidence presents itself, arrogance announces itself, all right? If you got to go out of your way to talk about you and all these things that you've done and, and brag and all, and you know, all that, that shows arrogance. Confidence is just able to answer the questions when they're asked. Yes, if she if she wants to dive deeper into you, you allow her to do that. And you share those things about yourself. There's nothing wrong with sharing things that you've done, accomplished, things of that nature. But when you're forcing that down her throat and when you're making it all about you, that's a problem. And you got to be mindful of, you got to be aware when... Let's say you guys are having a conversation and she is talking about herself and then you switch it back to you. Like I've seen this happen on both sides. I've seen women do it. I've seen men do it where they always want to turn it back to them. It's about them. That's a problem. All right. So you got to be mindful to allow yourself to listen, learn about the woman, understand her better. All right. But yes, being willing to share with her parts of you as well. Also, you know, we, we want you to be a confident man. We want you to believe in yourself and feel good about yourself. But don't try to be all cocky. Like sometimes men are forcing trying to be confident that they come across as cocky or arrogant or, they, or women can see it's a fake confidence and they're not really buying it. And now that kind of goes back to you're trying too hard and it makes you look bad. It makes you look lame. You don't need to do all that. Because here's another saying. Confidence isn't always, isn't believing you're going to always get it right. It's not being afraid to be wrong. All right? So essentially when it comes to dating, confidence isn't believing every woman's going to like you. That every date's going to be successful. It's not being afraid that it's not going to work out. It's not being afraid that she's not going to like you. She don't like you, so be it. Someone else will. You know what I'm saying? Again, that doesn't mean you don't recognize when there's areas about you that you need to improve. But you understand you can be the greatest man walking. There's still going to be a woman who's not feeling you. That's life. Just as she can be the greatest woman walking and you may not be feeling her. We don't need to internalize that. We don't need to turn that into anything negative. We take it for what it is. We keep it moving. And we move on to something bigger and better for each other. Another reason why women don't like you is because you're too judgmental. All right? So... Listen, nobody likes to have, most people don't like to have to deal with a very judgmental person, all right? And I think a lot of men, I've seen them, I've even seen them when they, online in different, uh, different situations where their pers- nothing wrong with having your feelings about things, your perspective of things. And, and the standards that you want to set for yourself and for your relationships. Like, I'm never going to knock that. You know, you got to do what works for you, what's best for you. But you do have to understand that when you come across with this very judgmental energy, speaking down on people, looking down on people, being overly critical, like, that's not attractive. It, it's not, for the most part, going to make people feel comfortable in your space. It's not going to make you become a more desirable partner. Some women may accept it, but you can only deal with it for so long. Like when I sit down with couples, whether they be married or long-term relationships, and it, it could go either way, a judgmental woman or a judgmental man. The other person who has to deal with it, it, it really starts to beat them down and it starts to drain them and it makes them very uncomfortable because now you, that person doesn't feel safe opening up or showing different parts to them. And, and it just throws everything off and it creates a very miserable environment. So as a man, you got to be mindful of that. And you got to ask yourself, if I'm being overly judgmental and overly critical, why? What's that really about? Is that really about that's just my true standard and who I am? Or is it this projection, this fear of like, you know, I feel like I'm saying that wrong, but basically what I'm getting at is there's sometimes there's a deeper root to why someone is so judgmental. I can tell you from the standpoint of someone being very critical, if you've ever met that person who's overly analyzing and being critical of everybody, 
and you dig deeper into them, what you find a lot of times is that they're overly critical because they're essentially trying to shine the light on everyone else so it doesn't get sh shined on them. It's basically, I'm going to hit you before you hit me. All right. Or I'm going to I'm going to knock y'all down a few notches in, in, in how I speak on y'all and how I view y'all so I can make myself feel better about myself. So, again, there's usually a deeper rooted issue to it. So just be willing to take a look at that and be aware of that. And, and, and if you don't think you're very judgmental, like ask the people around you, ask your friends, whether it be your homeboys or women that you dated, if you really want to see if this is a potentially a problem or not, because I've heard many stories and it just doesn't work out well for the man who's not willing to consider this as a problem. All right. Another reason why she doesn't like you or women don't like you or why you struggle with women is because you're too insecure. All right. So we talked earlier about being confident not being arrogant, but being confident. And the reality is that confidence makes every, anyone look a little bit better. All right? Confidence is attractive. Okay? I'm not saying confidence can overcome everything, but it, it helps. It helps a lot. And on the flip side, insecurity can become very unattractive, especially for a man. A lack of confidence can undermine a man in a lot of different ways, not just with women with work, with business, in other types of relationships, it's a problem. And so when you are very insecure as a man, women can pick up on that. If not, immediately at some point, it's going to start to show itself and that's going to start to cause her to want to push you away or to not want to move forward with you. And I have to say this because I've seen a lot of men, and this is why I don't want you guys to fake confidence because... There's been men who were able to, in the early stages of dating or that relationship, hide their insecurities, right? And with that, they were able to get the woman and everything seems cool. They're moving along. But at some point, because they never really resolved the deeper issues of their insecurities, it will come out at some point. Sometimes a lot sooner, a lot faster. Sometimes they can delay it. But either way, it's going to show its face. And when it shows its face, that woman's going to start to look at you different. You will, you will start to look less attractive. And then what happens is, in some cases, she eventually breaks up with the guy. And now the guy feels like, well, you know, you, you didn't really love me or you, you're this, you're that. But it's like, no, you, you weren't presenting your true self. And you had issues that you need to resolve. There was baggage you need to release that you hadn't done yet. Hadn't done... Had, had, I'm sorry, had not done that yet, right? And so it's, it's not to say that someone should just up and walk away the minute any insecurities are shown, but the reality is that if you don't address it before you get the woman, you're going to kick that can down the road. And then when it shows itself, most guys, most people don't just say, okay, it showed itself, now I have to go resolve it. No, if anything, it continues. It even gets worse in some cases. So she's not having to deal with just a moment of insecurity. It's an ongoing thing that now comes out. Now this man might be dwelling in his insecurity, dwelling in his negativity. That's tough to deal with. Over time, people can only you know, deal with that for so long before it finally pushes them away. And, and it, it will vary as far as how long, how much time a man has with that, like it might, this shit might last a few more months, for some people it might last a couple more years, but I'll tell you what, as long as those insecurities are not resolved, it's deteriorating that relationship. So you want to make sure you address that as soon as possible because it could be exactly why you're not having success with women as far as even gaining their interest, and it could be definitely why you're unable to sustain healthy, successful relationships with a woman. All right, just a couple more to go, and... The next reason why women don't like you or you're struggling with women is because you're too emotionally reactive, all right, or you're too sensitive. But let me focus on emotionally reactive because I'm going to be real with y'all. What I'm seeing in today's world is a lot more men being very emotionally reactive, 
all right? And that's not good. It's not healthy, okay? Because it also, it creates this, this, this level of emotional instability, being all over the place. Like, I'm going to tell y'all right now, I don't like, some of y'all may disagree with this. This is my personal opinion. I do not like seeing men going back and forth with women online. I don't like seeing men, or even in person, I don't like seeing men arguing with, I think like, yo, as a man, you got to be like, I'm not engaging in this nonsense and going back and for what, right? Or again, men who, uh, again, are just reacting emotionally and not processing and thinking things through, right? Not showing any level of poise in a situation, just being all over the place. And please understand this doesn't just happen with, like, I think when we talk about being sensitive, they, we, people tend to automatically think of, like, a guy who may be passive or soft or viewed as, you know, too, a nice guy and he's too sensitive. But let me tell you something. Some of these, quote unquote, hard guys, gangsters, whatever you want to call them, be emotionally reactive too. And, and though you may feel like, oh, but they're getting women... Let me tell you something. If you can see behind closed doors of what's going on in their relationship, it's a mess. Because if you are emotion, too emotionally reactive as a man, too emotionally unstable, trust and believe you're going to either create or contribute to chaos in your relationship. All right? And that's going to be a problem. You've got to be strong. You've got to be the rock in the relationship. You've got to be able to not let things phase you so easily. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's how you mature as a man. That's how you walk in your masculine energy. Otherwise, it's, it's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a big problem. So I think a lot of men gotta check themselves on that and understand, like, you you can't let that be who you are. Like I, I'm trying to find a, a different way to say it, but that's just what it boils down to. You just cannot be that emotionally reactive or overly sensitive man. You got to learn how to let things just roll off your back. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a much more attractive trait for a man to have. And I've seen situations where men go on on dates and because of that emotional reactiveness or that sensitivity, ha- mishandle situations so poorly, right? And, and fumble potentially good situations because they allow their emotions to get the best of them. Rather than, again, learning how to just sit, process, think things through, pray before you react. You know what I'm saying? And and allow yourself to handle things in a more calm, mature, intelligent manner. All right. So there's another big reason why women don't like you or you struggle with women is because you complain too much. So... Nobody likes to have to deal with someone who's always so negative, always complaining, throwing themselves a pity party, always being the victim. That's unattractive. Now, listen, let's be real. I know some of y'all are going to say, but that's how some of these women are. Again, we can't, if a woman's like that, then just don't deal with her. But don't allow that to be your excuse to be like that too. You know what I'm saying? And, and, in my opinion, the reality is that a woman can get away with that a little bit more, just a little bit more, than a man can. Like a man who's always complaining, playing the victim, it's going to make you look so much less attractive, so much less desirable. That's not going to draw people to you. Not just won't draw women to you. Like even your homeboys ain't going to want to hang around you too much if you're always complaining and being the victim. It's It's just a very negative environment to create with that kind of energy. You know what I'm saying? And so you got to really stand up on your own two feet. You got to be willing to say, like, listen, life ain't always fair. There's plenty of obstacles. There's plenty of things that we wish were different. But as a man, you got to say, all right, I'm going to work with what I got and I'm going to do my best to conquer what I can conquer. I'm going to focus on what I can control, right? And complaining is not going to allow you to overcome anything. You, you don't overcome by whining and, and be, uh, I was going to say bitching, but I was trying not to say that. But you know what I'm saying? All of that is not going to get you anywhere. At the end of the day, it's about, all right, what can I do? What can I, what, what, what can I improve? What can I conquer? 
What can I overcome? And focusing on the game plan and executing that rather than complaining about circumstances that are completely out of your control. All right, so last but not least, the other reason why women don't like you or you struggle with women is because you lack purpose, you lack vision, you lack a plan, all right? I always say, if you don't know where you're headed in life, you don't know who belongs on that path with you. But for a man, not only do you not know who belongs on that path with you, you're going to have a hard time finding somebody to walk that path with you. All right. At the end of the day, there's a lot of women, believe it or not, who will build with a man, so to speak, who will work with a man who's on his journey to something bigger and better. But they need to see something. Like I always say, a man needs a woman that believes in him, but a man has to give a woman something to believe in. All right. If you can't present a vision, a plan, an actual purpose in your life, what are you expecting her to hold on to? What are you expecting her to pour into you about? Like, you're not giving her nothing to work with. And when you don't have these things in place, it's very easy to slide into a, 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 a mindset of complacency, a mindset of laziness, you know what I'm saying, where you'll find yourself, weeks have gone by, months have gone by, years have gone by, you haven't accomplished anything because you have nothing that you're aiming for. Right? So it's not just about how this looks to a woman. It's about, well, what are you doing for yourself? How are you improving your own life? What are you setting yourself up for? And you got to recognize and identify that as soon as you can. So if you're single right now, hoping to attract more women, it's, it's good to take a, a season of your life where you're going to lock into, all right, let me figure myself out. Let me figure out what my purpose is, where I need to be going in life. Start creating that structure, and now I now you can see what woman one fits into that structure, and what woman is willing to embrace it and encourage it and and, and help add to your growth. But when I say I say add, not create. So essentially, there's some of you do, some of you guys. You got to be real with yourselves, and it may not be you. Maybe it's a friend where you're looking for a woman who's basically gonna put you on her back and carry you to the finish line, who you're expecting to, to do for you. It's like, rather than build with you, build for you. That's unacceptable. That's completely unacceptable. You got to be willing to do your part. She should be adding to it. She should be helping magnify it, but she should not be the one creating it. She should not be the one figuring it out for you. And you don't want that because let me tell you something. If she has to drag you or create your success, if she has to create your purpose for you, she will have a hard time in the long run respecting you as a man. Because in the back of her head, she made you. And all that you are is owed to her. All right? And she needs someone that she can look up to in the sense that she can revere. She can feel like, again, he, he's done this for himself because that gives her the security of knowing that you're someone that she can lean on and she can rely on to make things happen. And that's why it's best that you establish that first in your life before you even concern yourself with trying to get the attention of any woman. Now, granted, some of y'all may, in the process of figuring things out, meet the love of your life. I'm not saying that there's no circumstances to which you can still move forward with that person while you figure it out, but let's not rely on that. Let's not look for that to be the case. Let's focus on trying to set this up properly, establishing the right foundation so it's easier for a woman to come in your life, join with you, and now build something amazing with you. So real quick, before we wrap up this video, let me say this. In regards to purpose and even in regards to who you choose to entertain in your life, what woman that is, for those of you who are believers, like, don't neglect the need to talk to God. Like I, I think for a lot of men, they're not tapping into their spirit to understand where they need to be going in life and who they need to be dealing with, or what situation they should be entertaining or not entertaining. And so I think it's important as a man to establish that spiritual relationship, to, to practice talking and hearing from God by asking God about the little things. Like, yo, it's it's we struggle to hear God in the big moments because we don't include them in the little ones. But when we include them in the little ones and we get comfortable with that, 
Now it's easier to connect and hear in those moments where we really need that guidance and it's a big situation on our hands. And understand, the woman you choose to be with, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And you don't want to leave God out of that scenario. So learn how to pray more, connect with God more, connect with your spirit more, and allow God to guide you to bigger and better things. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on five ways to stand out from other men. I, To me, the key was because I was not as sharp as I usually am, I wasn't as intimidating, I became more approachable.